Um, okay. We're just going to roll with that. All right. And uh, testing, testing. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the next episode of Toontown Rompa, Chapter 2. In the last episode, we just entered Chapter 2. We sauntered our way into this foggy wasteland that is to be our next uh, next environment. I have some snacks with me this time, so I'm going to be snacking. I don't know if you can see this little visual glitch that I've gotten to work. The a window in full screen, as I found, is kind of buggy in this game. Um, there's currently two visual glitches on my screen. I know you can't see one of them. Only I can see it. And it will be the the entire time. And it's kind of a funny one, too. I, I might try and... I might put it on screen or whatever. It's kind of funny. But this other one is where my mouse is. I think you can see my mouse. I don't even know if you can see it. Um... But I just tested it and it goes away right after this slide, so it'll disappear. Anyway, let's continue our investigation. I don't even think we finished checking this place out. Alright. If I'm not mistaken, the tunnel to Daisy Gardens is fast approaching us, yes? Yeah, it's gone in case you could see it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, should be just around this corner. But something tells me it's gonna be locked away, just like on Silly Street. Well, only way to fo only one way to find out, Coach. Oh yeah, we had separated into groups of five. This is our little quintet of people. We turned the corner with not much expectations, and we found... Yeah, that's not too surprising. A blocked tunnel, just like Toontown Central. So that's what I'm assuming is... I had that theory forever ago, is that these... Doors are doors that are locked, but will eventually be opened. Eventually, we'll go check out Daisy, who I forgot was a Disney character. Mm. Oh, I should have seen this coming. It's one thing to be denied once, but to deny, be denied twice? I swear, if there's any way to get to that flunky... He will pay! Maybe we can find a way to break these doors open. There's gotta be some sort of button, right? Maybe it's just, like, really hidden. Yeah, no. Uh, as if Flunky would let us go to Daisy Gardens without another murder happening. Wait, do you think that Daisy Gardens would be unlocked next? It is where the invasion of the Cogs was third easiest to deal with. Oh... So is there a logical ordering to these places, like level 1, level 2, level 3? I'm thinking of some weird frame business right now, I think. But anyway. That did make sense, but I bet Flunky would only open it up if another case happens. I suppose our garden will have to wait, Coach Z. Alright, I just restarted. I want to see. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I was... On top of the visual glitches, I was having some frame choppiness, so... I don't really know what that's about. I restarted. Should be good now. That's perfectly fine by me. After all... What's most important to us is preventing another murder from ever happening again! Because if we give... Flunky what he wants... Then we'd be just as bad as those cogs that kidnapped us! You're right, Coach C. Everyone saw what happened to Clef, and we have a decent amount of areas to explore. We could have been trapped in some factory, having to look at bland walls every day, but this is just Toontown. Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad, right? I mean, compared to other killing games, it's like, some of these people are actually kidnapped at their homes. But, I guess that means the motives will just have to be that more, in that much more intense. Exactly, Flippy. Even if we never escape, we can find comfort in our familiar surroundings. The only downer is what do Toons think happened to us? We might not know that, but we can only hope that they're taking the situation well. Well, then, um, 
I suppose we should get back to the playground. Maybe we'll get back there first. Yeah, let's do that. Want to lead the way, Flippy? Uh, wait. Before we go... Huh? What is it? Uh, actually, it can wait. We should get back to the playground before the other team. Oh, okay then. Yep, time to go back, everyone. Let's get a good job going. This entire area is very fo foreboding because of all the fog. There's no sky, there's no sun. It's like... Foreboding. Depressing. We went back to the playground hoping the other tombs were... The tombs back home were safe. Then we, when we returned, a group of tombs were waiting for us. A group? Oh, these three, right. Oh, some of them are back. I assume the other five searched Lighthouse Lane. Yeah. It looks like you two found Surly. He was actually pretty easy to find. He was about ready to go into Punchline Place when we found him. So, Surly, did you find anything? Mm, no. There were no, and not any indications on whether or not Toontown Central would stay open or not. I suppose I should have expected that. So you found nothing. I don't believe you. I assume we can't venture further beyond TTC or Donaldstock. Yeah. Well, we can wait for the others near the HQ, since it's kind of cramped on these planks. Well, I'll go first. To the HQ we get. Ow! Did he just fall off? Tom, you okay? Oh, he hit his foot. I'm fine, just tripped on something, I think. Uh, okay, phew. Wait, w was it that plank that you tripped on? Yeah, looks like it. Ah, I see. Everyone watch your step. Got it. Shouldn't we just put it down? I got this. Coach Z stomped on the board until it fit into place. I'm not too sure if that'll keep it there forever. However, at least no one will trip on it in the near future. And that's apparently a very loose board. Well, it's as simple as not pulling it, so we'd probably be fine. I'd assume no one would do that, yes. Uh, wait. I think the other group is returning. Let's move towards the HQ, then. Oh boy, here we go. We noticed that the HQ here was locked, just like how the TTC one was. Maybe the next trial grounds. The trial grounds will move, maybe. But no one bothered to mention anything. And the other five tunes saw where we were and gathered around. <laughs> you can take a wild guess if we found anything or not. Here's a hint. It was nothing. Then it looks like it's just like before. <laughs> Except this time, no one found any blueprints or documents. Or is someone hiding it again? Like I said, Pete knows that we didn't hide anything useful. Hmm? Uh, I said something? Coach Z... No, wrong voice. I keep doing giggles and mo at the same time, almost, with their voices. Coach Z told me that you could read bad handwriting the best, and that there wasn't anything useful in that blueprint. Your group found him back in Toontown Town Central. Oh, that. Y yeah, there wasn't much I could gather from it. Yikes, this is really bad. What do I think I can find? Re. Uh, so what a re device. Pretty pretty much. <laughs> it really was only R and E that I could figure it out. If you wanted to know. Hmm. I guess Coach was right. <laughs> Not surprised you were proven wrong. <laughs> We've done all the investigating we could, right? There's no point in searching anywhere else. <laughs> Actually, there is. Chip and Dale's Acorn Acres. Oh. Because in it is a direct way to bus Bud HQ, which I bet those stupid cogs are at. Oh, really? I'm gonna take a fat guess and say that's blocked. 
So we all better go. No exceptions. Why should we just get ourselves killed? What? Do you think that Flucky would just let us waltz in and trash the place? <laughs> He'd probably just execute us on the spot. So what? You'd rather just not even try? Of course I'd rather not try. What? <laughs> He's genuinely confused. The fact that someone doesn't want to try is like actually confused. <laughs> like, yeah, we just started speaking another language. We all saw how Clef was executed. I don't want that to happen to me. So, do you want to go get yourself killed? Leave me out of it. Well, it was good having you for a while, uh, for a while there, Harry, but I guess, uh, you'll be first to leave again. Harry spotted the party hat building and just behind the HQ and ran into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was on the other side of the pond, I think. <laughs> As if Flunky would do that. Besides, what are the chances that the acres are even accessible? I bet that it's blocked by one of those idiotic barriers. Now that you say that, he goes into the tunnel, and just as he tried to enter it, bonk! W what the? <laughs> Not surprised, I was correct. Great. Not only was there nothing to find on any of the streets, but I can't even get anywhere near the bus spot HQ. This dude is just bred for violence. He has one thing on his mind, and it is beating the shit out of everything. Oh, boo-hoo. Cry me a river. Did you honestly expect anything useful? How pathetic. Oh, I'm pathetic? At least I'm trying to find things. If you're so adamant to get that stupid flunky's lair, then just dig underneath the tunnel. Oh, let me guess. You didn't even consider the thought. <laughs> this is why you're no leader, Giggles. And what you are, Mo? Oh, please. Leadership is something idiotic. What's the point of leading those who won't listen? <laughs> well, that's quite the view you have there, Mo. Someone who demands that doesn't believe in leaders. You buffoons start digging. I'm tired of dealing with you all. It seems Harry and Moe have left to do their own things, once again. The question now is, what will you all do now? Will you see if digging underneath the barrier will it, would allow you to access the acres? I wonder. He actually kind of talks like Nagi too sometimes too. It's just minus the hope. Sounds like Nagito. Hmm. I just don't know how to lift Harry's spirits. I can't even blame him. He was practically proven right with how Clef was planning to kill for over a day. <laughs> Look, Bessie. I know I grilled you about still having so some sort of connection to Clef. What he did was unforgivable. But I guess can't blame you for how you feel. Clef was quite the tune, wasn't he? Boom, 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 Riggy coming in here to crash this sentimental moment. Who wants to hear a joke? Seriously? What? We know that what happened to Clef. We know what happened with Clef already. No point in dwelling it over it anymore. The past is in the past, after all. Riggy, is that really how you feel? What do you mean? Are, are you are you really fine with what happened? I tried to look only forward, but I was really bad at it. You're like, just acting now, right? <laughs> Nothing I do is an act, Bethy, Bessie old pal. Clef only wanted to, to host to kill Clara, and that's that. Gotta put it to him, what a plan. You, you just keep running your mouth like nothing is wrong. I swear you're the worst type of tune. Quite rude to say to someone right next to you. Gosh. How about you back off before I knock you? Stop. Hmm? Stop.
Splat. I don't know. Just, Riggy, why are you saying these things? I thought... What? Am I wrong? Clef simply lost at the game, which is quite the bummer for him, but good for us. Yes, but you sound like... Like you don't even care at all. That's because he obviously doesn't. But... Riggy, were you just lying when you said losing any of us would be super bad? Well, of course dying is pretty bad. You can't live after that. Besides, I, I love that logic. It's impeccable. Can't, can't deny that. Besides, wouldn't you say that the mystery we had to solve was pretty... Interesting. I interesting? Is that all you felt about the case? We we lost Clara. Someone who didn't deserve to die. I really hope this is just an act, Riggy. Riggy! She was your only friend. Hmm. Well, I don't want to dig, so I'm going to head out. Oh, I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. So, um, should we start digging then? We don't have another choice. I have a sneaking suspicion that this barrier could span below the surface. However, perhaps I'm wrong. Better to try and fail than not to try at all. Indeed. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> With Lily leaving, it was only seven of us. Okay. Giggles, Tom, Surly, Paula, Pete, and I tried to dig for quite a while. But it was no use. Surly predicted right. No matter how far we dug, we couldn't get past whatever invisible barriers were set in stone. Eventually. Oh boy, we got a hole now. We had a broken fence before and a hole now. The broken fence didn't end up <laughs> broken fence didn't end up being important though. Well, I suppose there was an attempt. Although I assumed there would might be a timeline where it was. Indeed. Does anyone have any idea how long we've been doing this? It couldn't have been for much more than an hour. Giving up, we noticed that someone was watching us. I was saying it better not be Mo. Wait, were you just standing there this whole time? <laughs> not the whole time. However, I have been here for the past 10 minutes or so. And you didn't even bother to help? Even Flippy of all tunes helped out. Gee, thanks. Like I, like Surly stated, I believe that no matter how far down you dug, you would not achieve any results. However, I wondered, how much time would you all be willing to spend on a task that deals no rewards? On a journey throughout Lighthouse Lane, Mo showed nearly zero interest in actually exploring for, for himself. Whether out of laziness, selfishness, or any other reason, who knows? Seeing now how this group of toons is willing to dig for quite some time, perhaps I was wrong to temporarily follow Mo. Okay. Oh, and he just leaves after that? Okay, well, at least we got him on our side. Base Toldman. <laughs> Not believing we could do anything and yet he still just watched us. Giggles is mad because it's a day that ends in a lie. Hmm. There goes Surly. I can't grasp what he's trying to teach us. Regardless, perhaps Harry will be willing to talk now. That's a fat chance. And with Paula leaving, it was just us three standing next to a hole to nowhere. <laughs> well, um, maybe we could play a game using this hole. <laughs> We're so deprived. We dug for quite a while. Let's just fill it. Yeah, let's fill it in first. Yeah, oops, uh, yeah. Could definitely use a random game right now. Last one to fill the hole is a... 
is a f fragrant and fresh, a fresh and fragrant egg. <laughs> By the time we got the hole filled up, we were so tired that we ended up lying on the ground. That's a thumbnail. Woo! I'm pooped. Uh, Tom, your ear is, uh... Like commenting on the touching? Huh? Is something wrong with my ear? No, no, nothing. Just haven't ever laid down on the ground like this. Ah, okay. I thought I had something in it or something. Is, is this intentional? Like it's... They're touching their ears? Touching ears? No, no, you're you're perfectly fine, Tom. Oh, Flippy, uh, how have you been feeling? Well, to be honest, not good at all. <laughs> I feel as though that investigation, the trial, especially now, you've become more cheerful than me. I have. Well, you have been able to keep your spirits consistent. <laughs> Because, uh, we've kind of been falling apart. Well, during the investigation, Pete told me something personal. Oh, I, uh, I told that to Tom, too. Uh, I see. I know not saying sorry for you having to see a dead body before doesn't make sense, but, yeah. You think we'll ever know more about our pasts? Honestly, I don't know if I want to. Fair, but... I'd rather know why Giggles hates me so much. I guess so, but if I knew more about how I lost someone I knew, I'd probably be feeling a lot worse right now. Maybe I'd want to face whatever happened later, but definitely not right now, in a killing game. Yeah, I guess I should focus on what's happening right now. Hey, well hey, at least we're still here. Though, guess I shouldn't jinx it. Yeah, maybe we should get up now. This terrain isn't really comfortable. Got it. There's no lack of death flags in this game. I Definitely several characters get death flags. Can't really tell who it's going to be. Us three got back up. This... I uh, think we should check the gag shop just to see what's inside. Well, we don't have much else to do. Sure, what Flippy said. Lucky wouldn't put anything bad inside, right? I doubt it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the dangerous stuff is on the outside. Look at that safe. We all stepped inside. Money, 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 money. Right. It looks like there's a bunch of money here, too. Oh my god, Goofy is staring into my soul. What the hell? That is kind of creepy. I don't get why there's random money in both this gag shop and the one in Toontown Central. I got no guesses on why that is. Either of you have any? Hmm. Well, I assume you found the gag... I don't remember what her voice was. Assume you found the gag shop. Were you able to figure out why there's a bunch of cog bucks stuck in the store? Nope. Well, that's unfortunate. I've been going around asking everyone with no success. Gotta say, there's a lot more of us here than I'd expect. Tell me about it. I actually thought it was only me and Tom for a bit. Hmm. We'll find out how all this happened, Clara. For everyone's sake. Hey, Flippy, you okay there? Uh, yes, sorry. Just can't think of anything. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't appear that there's much to discover here. I can't get behind these walls of money. Should we try lifting someone over to see if there's something behind there? I can lift Pete! Uh, you don't have to do that. I I'm... I'm the tallest. We can just move the couch over to the wall of money. Oh. Yeah, that could work too. Be blushing. It was very faint, I couldn't really tell. Tom and I moved the couch over for Pete. And he was just barely able to look over the shelves. After a quick look around, he shook his head and we put the couch back to where it used to be. Ah, man. Guess there wasn't anything special about this gag shop then. Doesn't seem like it. Well, at least we know there's nothing hidden behind. 
That makes me think there's something hidden behind there. Peter, you, Peter, you sure? You sure you didn't see anything, Pete? Hmm. Attention all tunes. Come to Toontown Central's Plaza for an announcement. Oh. Oh no. It's not the motive already, right? I, I don't think so. I say that, but my heart was already racing. No matter what the announcement is for, we don't have a choice. We have to go now. Got it. As we went through the barnacle, through both Barnacle Boulevard and Punchline Place at a brisk walk, reaching the plaza in only a few minutes. We were the first ones there, but it didn't take long for the others to arrive. With everyone present, a monitor once again descended. <laughs> We're having to go from your huts all the way to here. I must say, I'm pleasantly surprised it didn't take you that long. <sighs> Just shut it, you cog. Tell us why we have to be here. Oh, such confidence. I wonder where that will go. After all, this E is the motive announcement. <laughs> But it's only been a day since the previous trial. Why would you do this already? Quite simple. This motive works best by being activated for as much time as possible. Speaking of which, I'll announce it now. We instinctively braced for whatever Flunky had to say. The motive is as follows. What if you could murder someone without risk of an execution? Oh. I like these twists. These are rare. Uh, that's... What do you mean by this, Flunky? Ugh. What do you mean by this, Flunky? Oh, obviously you can't just kill anyone to get off scot-free. This will be the second trial, no? So what better way to celebrate than to split you tunes into pairs? These pairs will either be a tune you trust, someone you hate, or perhaps even someone you barely know. Huh. We're gonna get a best friend, huh? Or an enemy. Oh god, I really hope we don't get giggles. Or someone you barely know. So it could literally be anyone then. Right? I made sure there'd be a variety of the types of pairs, and not necessarily an even amount of each. Could you even have an even amount of each of them? How many people do we have? Wait, we have an odd number. I guess we'll go over that. Great, a partner system. How does this even work? The first portion of this pairing rule is simple. If you kill your partner, even if you are found out, you won't be executed. Only harmed. Oh. So we're not friends with our partner. Secondly, if you kill someone else, as long as your partner knows you are the killer, your partner won't get executed with the other innocents, if you two can keep suspicion off of the one that killed. Oh. Hold on a second. Okay. Okay, so your partner will get executed with the other innocents if you two can keep suspicion off the one of you that killed. Okay, that could get tricky. Finally, if you and your partner kill another pair, one to each, then not only would the others have to figure out both killers to avoid execution, they need to figure out who killed who. And even if the innocents figure out who killed who, both culprits would get to live on, really, now. What a deal. What a deal. Wow. Okay. Hmm. That's, um... That's a lot of opportunities there. That's a lot of possible ways this could go down. Hmm. <laughs> Will you cooperate with your partner or off them? 
The choice is yours. Yeah, that really depends, right? Wouldn't... Would it make more sense to work with your partner or work against them? Based on that... Last rule... You could... You'd be working with them. In the second rule, you could also kind of work with them. But in the first rule... You're obviously working against them, trying to kill them. Hmm. So, in other words, you're opening up the opportunity for two tunes to work together on a murder. Oh yeah, that too. Didn't even think about that. We have to deal with accomplices. Wow. It'll kind of be kind of be refreshing. I get tired of, you know that. And every single dang and rompo, we have to. In several fan games, you know, we have to rule out accomplices because who would do? Who would be an accomplice? There's never any incentive to be an accomplice. I, I like to see there be incentives to be an accomplice. I like that. <laughs> Wasn't there a rule that stated only one tune could leave? We'll get there when we inevitably get there. Oh. Now, like, now that makes it sound like it'll be like a death match or something. Between the yeah yeah okay, Rigi catches my vibe. Yowza! Maybe it'll be a one-on-one -on -one duel. Don't you dare be getting any ideas. What about the thirteenth tune? There is an odd number, Flunky. Of course, Olden would be the one to bring that up. Wait, yeah, unless there will be a group of three. That wouldn't really work. I already have a clause for them. Simply put, one of you won't get a partner. If you get killed, then your killer will have a chance at surviving their execution, if they're caught. Also, you'll know who your partner is tomorrow. It's kind of like there's four outcomes now. If that solo person gets killed, it's another incentive to do that. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone's going to be letting anyone else know who their partner is. That seems like very, very valuable information. Oh boy, I really hope we don't get giggles. You'll be allowed to share who your partner is with others. However, do you really think that'd be a smart decision? Hell no. That is all. For now, at least. Pairs? This mo- <laughs> Pairs. This mode of it incentivizes, incent, incentivizes a pair working together to kill another pair. How? How do we deal with this? Something horrible is going to happen. Yeah, especially with several of these outcomes nixing the risk of execution, that is... Definitely one of the strongest motivators that you can have. Could I even stop it? I don't think you could. Honestly, this is quite the motive. So this is Flunky's plan. With the scarring nature of seeing someone be executed in such a brutal way, his next motive provides clauses that allow one to avoid such a fate. Yeah, that's very tempting, isn't it? I see. And to top it off, it encourages two tunes to work together. To pull off a murder case that would be impossible usually with only one hand doing the dirty work. Oldman walked away saying nothing more. Well, but even if someone could not get executed, the only way to not be killed or harmed would be if a pair kills another pair. And like, wouldn't that be difficult to do? That is true, and any other clause states that any killer would be at least seriously harmed, no? So, we're gonna be okay then. Absolutely not. That's only if they get caught, no? The main rules of the game still stand. If someone were to get away with murder, then they win. No. And considering how most of you idiots stumbled through the last trial, 
with an accomplice being an option now, another murder is almost certain no. No one is thinking about working together to harm someone, right? Hmm. I wonder. Wait. How will we know when our part who our partner is? Perhaps through a dream again? If the monkey stated that we'll know by tomorrow, yes. Yeah, I imagine it'll be like when we wake up or something. Th then I'm going home. So what about everyone else? Oldman and Harry are already gone. I believe our best plan of action is to simply go back to our huts too. The only way we'll find out who our partner is, is by calling it a day. You're right, Pete. Hmph. <laughs> Sending us off with no actual plan? And <laughs> you call yourself the ultimate mayor. Whatever. I'm tired today anyways. Tired of being a bit. The rest of us simply walked back to our huts, but... Before I left. Hmm. Oh, Dr. Cyril, here to tell us you did in fact find something? Just stay behind for a second. Oh, what is it? Cyril seemed to be hesitating. Quick, grab his clipboard. I have but one question for you. What year is it? That is a very telling question, Cyril. He's got some knowledge. He knows something. Hmm? The year? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's 2013, no? Huh. I didn't actually expect a specific year like that. Wait. Is 2013 a significant year for Toontown? Oh. Yeah, he knows something, that's for sure. But what? Are we in the future? The past? Uh, yes. I suppose so. Perhaps I lost track of time. That must be it. Did you think it was another year? No. <laughs> Simply put, I did not know what year it was. A combination of spending so much time experimenting and the memory loss we were given. Maybe the year was important to those around you? Memories of others were muddled as much as possible. Perhaps you are right, Flippy. Very well. Thank you for your answer. We should head back now. If you say so, Surly. Well, that was nothing but strange. I I made it back to the huts and I entered mine. I feel like Surly wouldn't ask that question for no reason. But I can't think why he would. I stared at my wall for a while. I don't even know why. I don't even know if I want to go to sleep or not, because if you really will know where partner is by tomorrow. What if they try to make us hate them? Or maybe we'll know some other way. Maybe a note included in the daily meal? I just don't know. I should be able to figure this out, but with no information. Huh? Who's there? I press my ear to the door. I wonder if he's still awake. Oh, it's Pete. Hello, Flippy. What brings you here? Well, not much. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. With the motive starting tomorrow, we have to be prepared in any way we can. You're right, Pete, but what could we do? Well, perhaps putting in place some sort of self-imposed rules could work. The problem with that is, how many would actually follow them? Maybe the threat of, mo of a motive would motivate others to follow them? No, I'm thinking the usual suspects would just break the rules. Harry, Mo, Oldman, Riggy. But wouldn't putting a bunch of rules seem overly bossy? Yeah, we don't want to be the authoritarian that Giggles thinks we are. I doubt a lot of them would even listen to what I have to say. Really? Not just giggles? A lot of tunes have just completely stopped trusting me. Pete, you didn't see the most of it since you were absent a decent chunk of our investigation. Ah, uh, right. I suppose I was. Though, 
if they wouldn't listen to you, then I'll do it. You want to try managing everyone? Pete? Look at Pete stepping up. Well, I don't exactly want to do it, but if it helps secure those we care about, I'll do it. Any way we could stop a case from happening, we have to do all we can. Someone we care about. I have a feeling I know who Pete is talking about. At least in his eyes. Tom? Is this real? Then I'll stand behind you, Pete. Thank you, Flippy. Well, I suppose I should let you rest now. Let's just hope whoever our partner is, we're not made to hate them or something. He left my hut with nothing else to do, I fell asleep. I'm gonna get them. Alright. We're only like uh, 37 plus a few minutes so far. I had to cut this into two clips, so that should be about 40. Okay. So we're gonna get our motive. I guess we're gonna get our partner here, and I'm shortly after that. That'll be the end of today's episode. Well, oh, what? Well, well, well. The motive has officially has now officially started. I didn't have some sort of dream. Are we the solo? Wait, don't tell me. Am I the? Wait, I feel there's something on my right shoulder. Hold on, is it taped to me? What could be taped onto my right shoulder? Took a little bit of effort to rip off with my left hand. Ow. That hurt a bit, but I finally got it off. What's on this piece of something? Wait, this is... Z Zucchini? Coach Z? His name is Zucchini? That's a great name. I love it. Coach Zucchini. He's so much less threatening now. My partner, Coach Z, yeah. So it must be, um... We got a friend. We didn't get an enemy. That's good. I'm assuming Coach Z is enough to call a friend now. So I got Coach Z. Okay, phew. That's someone I trust. But I shouldn't let anyone else see this. Better burn it or something. I put the sticker, I think it's a sticker, back on my shoulder. Why? Can't really tell what this thing is made of, but it doesn't seem easy to tear. Question now is, when could I meet up with Coach Z about this? Well, regarding that, I don't know how many other tunes will be going to TTC for our morning meeting. Though I might as well go. I made my way over to the plaza. Seems I was the first to arrive. Though less than a minute after I got there. Oh, hey Flippy. Guess we're the first two here. The last time we were the first one, we were one of the first ones here. We we're actually the first ones following us. Oh no, Flippy's down. Yeah, it is a very similar scenario. People in this game have so far been consistent. Bessie's an early riser. <laughs> Little did we know, Clara was already gone by then. Gah, I just wish I could have done something about that. Guess there isn't much to talk about, is there? Uh, sorry Bessie, just thinking to myself. Let me guess, the motive and stuff? And stuff, yeah. <laughs> well, hmm. Maybe there's something we could do to lift everyone's spirits. But the last time that happened, things went horribly wrong. Oh, the pie event. Although, I don't have my drop buttons anymore, so maybe there's no way to lose the laugh? You don't have your gags anymore? No, I think they were taken sometime during the night. It was by Flunky, right? Not anyone else? Ah! Riggy jump scare! Ah, so there's where you two were. Riggy, uh, hi, Riggy. 
Well, someone is elated to see me. What about you, Flippy? Uh, hi, Riggy. Well, that's no way to start a day off. Especially since the motive finally started. Yeah, uh, sure did. Are they partners? They're, they'd be friends, right? Wait, Riggy, what do you mean, so there's where you two were? Is everyone someplace else? Yep. Mo stopped everyone from going to TTC since apparently meeting up next to the docks HQ makes more sense and stuff. And I gotta agree with that, buckos. So let's go back. Wow. We just got ditched. Well, guess we know where everyone else is. And, uh, about potentially doing something. Maybe once we split up, you could gather a few tunes to go swimming? Oh. That's what you want to do? Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Sure, let's make it only a few of us. Got it. Anyways, we should probably get back. Indeed. Bessie and I caught up to Riggy and once we got to where everyone else was. Wow. You can't just do this. Really? What amazing ideas do you have? I just wanted to implement a randomized duo system to make sure no one would try anything. Randomized? Really? And what if one of those randomized duos just happens to be an actual duo? If you want actual results, you'll do things the correct way. My way. But what you want is for everyone to have the same schedule every day. Like a massive group of people? That would be more effective. Oh, oh, uh-oh. What did I just walk into? What's this talk about a schedule? Oh, look who it is. The late mayor of Toontown. Let me guess. You're also going to complain about what is literally the perfect plan. How would controlling every part of our lives be perfect? That's just the type of tune Mo, Mo is. What? The type of tune that's actually willing to state the cold, hard truth? Go ahead. Do whatever you please, then. Just know that without rigorous control, all you'll find is a dead body within a few days. That's... Exactly correct. And you don't want to admit it. Well, you all heard him. Considering how this motive works, I have to agree with his plan. Great. We're back to being on the same page again. But we can't just start a regime this strict. And? Got any better ideas? Or do you want to see a dead body show up? Of course I don't. But this isn't the way to go. No good plans again, Flippy. You didn't even give us time. I... I swear... Those two are just so annoying. We can figure something out. I just know we can. Yeah, we just gotta think. The question is, is there really an alternative? Hmm. Surly, you can back us up, right? Well, I'm sure that we can figure out a good alter- There's, there's no good alternative. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> But you all know what'll happen if you don't do something drastic. Is that what you truly believe? Yes, I'm... I'm not going to be fooled again. I see. So that's your belief, then. All the rabbits. Well, Alvin, aren't you gonna say something like, You've gotta stop thinking about that killing game. Harry is totally bringing down the mood. I don't believe that any words could persuade Harry otherwise at the moment. Only he can change his ways. Uh, poof. It's never impossible to change a tune. All you gotta do is smile on. Even if that may come easy to you, Riggy, please give Harry his space. Everything we've had to go through thus far is, well, taxing, to say the least. 
Yep. Especially, well, the trial. But, uh, hey, Harry. I was a suspect, too. So, don't take it personally. They were just trying to find the culprit. And, well... Figuring out that someone I wanted to know better did that. Yeah, that was pretty bad. No, like, super bad. Even if he only did something so evil because of a motive, he wanted to get away with it. I don't... I know I'm not really good at deep conversations, but after what Coach C said to me, how Cliff was willing to kill all of us, I didn't know what to say. Because he was right. Cliff only wanted revenge. No matter the cost. I know my attempts at raising morale have just been backfiring, but I don't know what else to do. And yet, even after everything that's happened, I still want to believe in all you guys. I'm sure there's a way we can all trust each other. He's being, he's being surprisingly silent. It's like he, like he is listening. There's no way we can trust all each other, right? No matter what the motive says, can we really believe Flunky would let someone go? Indeed. So please, Harry, you have to trust us. I know the situation is terrifying for you, because we all feel that way. Some of us have been pushing others away, or trying to take control because we're scared. So, don't think you have to go through this game alone, Harry. Uh, top it! Huh? You... You really think we can trust each other? Especially now that there's multiple ways to avoid execution! That... That mindset of yours... ...is going to get you killed next! Now Harry's throwing out the threats. Who is he talking to, by the way? Damn. Felt like we almost had him there. The desire to take control... ...and being a total coward. How peculiar. And yet, such an overlap makes complete sense. He always just leaves with some... Some ominous, some ominous, like, what would you call that? What, what the heck? Like, like he never leaves a conversation in a normal way. He always leaves some ominous message hanging in the air for everyone else to marinate in as he just leaves. In this case, literally muttering to himself as he walks away. It's um, definitely a unique part to his character. I don't I don't really know how to describe it. I I have to make sure he's safe. Oh. 100 bucks says he went back to his room. Well, this turned out the opposite of great. Well, it uh, didn't go horribly. I suppose so. I can tell for I can tell you for sure that it's not your fault, Nessie. Maybe we need some sort of control. But we can only feel comfortable taking such measure measures if we actually trust each other. Couldn't have said it better myself, Coach C. Buddy, the biggest obstacle is a lack of trust in each other. The fishing we did before helped a bit, right? So perhaps something simple like that. Maybe when there's less tunes, Flippy. Why don't you want a group of people? Hmm? Didn't somebody disappear? Oh, what do you mean? Looked around and realized Surly had left as well. Huh. So Surly was the one who did the magic trick then. Well, I better ask him how he did it. I uh, don't think it was a trick. He probably just walked away at some point. He's definitely gone to go look at something. Well, good thing he's gone. I guess I can't blame you for thinking that way. You don't need him. You don't need me to repeat how I feel about Riggy. I feel like he's going to do something stupid. Seriously stupid. You don't say. Maybe I should talk to him. But the big problem is I don't know if talking to him would do anything. Well, it wasn't exactly much of a conversation, but I've talked to him one-on-one -on -one before. Yeah, there's our 
There's our choice from earlier showing up again. Maybe I can help talk with him. I mean, go ahead if you want to, but I doubt you'll get anywhere. And uh, there's something I kind of want to discuss with Flippy. But it can wait, so you can go interrogate him or something. I mean, if you say so, we can talk to Riggy later. Wait, what? Oh, if you say so, I'm going to go talk to Riggy. We can talk to Riggy later. Let me talk to Lou. Okay. All righty. All right. I think I'm going to stop things here. I think we're approaching on one hour. And our first decision of the chapter has arisen. So, hold our breath. I think I have an idea of what I want to do, but we'll get to that in the next part. Thank you all for watching Chapter 2, Part 2. I'll see you on Chapter 2, Part 3. Goodbye. Dang, 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 dang. <laughs>